Okay, hi year 10. Um, obviously it's been a couple of weeks now and we figured you might be missing it. So here's our attempt to try and make you a video lesson that hopefully will be a little bit easier for you to follow than some of the others that we've been sending you. Uh, so hopefully on your screen right now you can see me, uh, but also much bigger you can see what we're going to try and do during this lesson. Uh, firstly, we're going to try and enlarge a shape using a scale factor, firstly a whole number scale factor, then we're going to use some fractions and a negative scale factor, and lastly we're going to try and find a centre enlargement if we've got the shapes and the scale factor. Uh, for this lesson you will need a sharp pencil, a ruler, and if you've got a couple of bits of plain paper that would be really useful too. You could do this in your book but it will be easier to do it on plain paper. Okay, uh, so let's get started started. Uh, the technology is really new so we're, let, bear with me while I try and make everything work. Uh, so the first thing we're going to learn to do is to enlarge a shape uh, you, about this point here. So that we're going to we're going to enlarge the shape, centre A, and we're going to use a scale factor of three. So firstly what I need to do is, and you're going to do something similar to this when you do your practice, is I need to put some dotted lines from this dot here to through to every corner. Okay, you need to do this really accurately, you need to hit the corners. If you miss the corners then any mistake you make will get like three times bigger because we're using a scale factor of three. So the more accurate you can be the better. I'm doing this quite quickly so it's bound to go horribly wrong. Next up I need to measure the distance from this point to each of the corners. Uh, so I'll just do that here. This one here I reckon comes in at about 1.7. So I've measured this distance here from here to here. That's 1.7 centimeters. Uh, the scale factor I'm using is 3, so I'm going to triple that. So that's 3, 4, 5.1. So now I'm always going to measure from the dot. Don't measure from the corners. If you measure from the corners, you'll actually change the scale factor. So I'm going to do 5.1 from here to here. So that's three times the 1.7. Okay, likewise, I'm going to do the same thing here. So that's 4.1, so I'm going to triple that. That makes 12.3. And so that's going to come, just extend my line a little bit, about here. This one's 4.4. Oh, something crazy gone on on my screen. Try again. This one is 4.3, so 12.9. And this one's bang on two, so that will be six. Now, if I've done a decent job, it'll look like a rectangle when I've finished. If I've done a terrible job, then all my lines will have gone a little bit wonky. And that will be because I've made a slight error in my measuring. Not too bad. Okay, so what happened is I measured from the dot to the corner and then I tripled that measurement and measured again from the dot to the corner to create the new corner. Did the same to this corner, so measured this distance and tripled it, same all the way around. Okay, now they're just because the that one had a um, dot out here, okay, we could move the dot around, so I'm just going to show you what happens if I change the dot. Here's some I made earlier. Okay, so if the dot was in the middle, then I'd obviously be measuring outwards and the shape would end up around the original, the pink one's the new one. This time I used a scale factor of two, so I doubled all the distances. So I measured this distance and this distance here is twice as big. Okay, sometimes the center is right on the corner. So here, when, when the dot is right on the corner, this corner doesn't move, obviously, because it's right on the dot. Everything else gets twice as far away, because again, I'm doing scale factor two, and so the shape sort of blows up from this corner, okay? So next up, I think I've got some for you to try. So I've emailed you a PDF, and on that PDF are some pictures that look like this, and all I need you to do is to pause this video and then I need you to look at the first three on that PDF and see if you can do something similar. You don't don't print it out please because there's no need to. Just draw yourself a little triangle, put a dot over here somewhere and then follow the instructions on the PDF. So you're going to do number one and number two and number three which you can't see on my screen at the moment. Okay, so once, you, once you've finished that, you can restart the video, but for now you're going to press pause and do those first three examples.
Okay, so hopefully you've done those three examples uh, and got something sensible that looked a little bit like mine. Next up, we're going to look at what happens if the scale factor is a fraction. So this is my next example. And this one is going, here's the dot. I didn't label it A. I'm going to label it A now. And this time we're going to use a scale factor of a third. Okay, the one I've set you is a half, so you're going to half everything. I'm going to do a scale factor of a third, so I'm going to divide everything by three, find a third of it. Do the same as I did before, connect the dot to every corner. I usually use a dotted line for these, it just makes it look a little bit different to the lines that I'm using for my actual shape. And again, I'm going to just be really cautious. I've done a terrible job there. Look, I've missed the cross, so that's not really good enough. So I'm going to try again and actually hit the cross this time because, like I said earlier, every mistake gets magnified if the scale factor is a big one. Oh, I've just realised you can't see me. My camera work is not great yet, but hey, we'll practice. So this time I'm going to measure the distance to the corner. This one here is 12.6. Now my scale factor is a third, so I need to find a third of that. To find a third of something, I'm just going to divide it by three. So a third of 12 is four, a third of six is 0.2, so I'm going to measure 4.2. It's going to turn up here. Okay, next up, this one to the next corner. This one is 6.9. So I'm going to again, I'm going to find a third of that. So a third of six is two, and a third of point of point nine is point three. So I'm going to measure to 2.3 on that line. This bottom one, 6.9 again, so that's 2.3 again. Oh. Won't move that. My ruler is getting in the way of my screen. Oh, if I put that like that, you can see better. And this one's 12 exactly, so divide that by 3 gives me 4. So my shape now, oh, it's got a bit wonky at the bottom. I might check that in a minute. Something's not quite right. So let's have a look. This one was 12, needs to go to 4. This one was 6.9, needs to go to 2.3. Okay, so this time you can see that the shape's actually got closer to the cross. If the fra scale factor is a fraction, then the shape gets smaller, but it also goes inside these lines. Instead of going out here like last time, it's gone inside the lines there. Okay, so again, I, if, what I want you to do is to pause the video here. And then actually go and find the one on the PDF with the scale factor of a half and see if you can do something similar. Okay, hopefully you've managed to successfully uh, enlarge something with a fractional scale factor. And last thing we're going to do in terms of actually doing it yourselves is look at a scale factor that's negative. Now, if the scale factor is negative, what actually happens is that the shape comes out here. So instead of the lines going this way through the shape, what we actually do is put the lines out the other side. So the minus sign tells you to go out the other side of the shape. So this time my lines go through the cross and wing their way out through the other side. Same thing here. Got a good view of me concentrating hard while I try and do this and look at the camera at the same time. Okay, so I'm going to measure from here to here, 2.6. Now this time it's a scale factor of minus 2. So the minus told me I was going out this side, but the 2 tells me to double anything, everything. So this is 2.6, double that makes 5.2. So now I'm going to measure from the cross, remember, always measuring from the cross, but on that line going out the other side. So the same line that I had, but going out the other side, Measuring 5.2 comes to here. Now I'm going to do this one. This one measures 4.5. If I double that, I get 9. So I'm going to measure 9 centimetres out the other side. 
Oh, can't move it out of your way. Have to move the uh, camera. This one here measures 4.9. So if I double that, that's 9.8. Measure it out the other side. And lastly, this one. Oh, maybe that was the 4.8. I've done the wrong one. So 9.8 out the other side on this line. And then this one was this one, which is 2.7. So that gives me 5.4. So that cross there needs to go. That was the wrong one. Join these up. Now you'll notice some things. Obviously the shape should be twice as big because the scale factor is a negative two. So everything got twice as big. But look what's happened to the shape. Okay, the shape has actually turned itself upside down. So when you do a negative scale factor, not only does it come out the other side, but actually the shape kind of turns itself inside out and goes the other way up. Okay, so the lastly, there's one left on your PDF to have a look at. So all you need to do now is to do the last example there, the negative scale factor example on there. Again, just copy the shape and put the cross in roughly the same place. Pause the video and once you've managed to successfully do that, play, press play again. <clears throat> oh, now I've drawn this one sideways, so something's not so good here. Um, I'm reluctant to play with the camera because it took me ages to line that up. That's not my strength, but I'll play with that so that you can now see it. Uh, so my writing's sideways, but we'll, we'll cope with that. But hopefully you can now see the picture. So the last thing you need to be able to do is to find the center of enlargement and a scale factor if you're given the two shapes. So here are my two shapes. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is look at finding the scale factor because that's quite easy. If I look at how long one of the sides is, so this one is three, six, nine centimeters long, and I look at this one, this one is three squares long, this one is nine squares long. So this one's my, uh, let's assume this is my original. And this is my image, the new one. Okay, so to find my scale factor, I just look at one pair of sides and say what happened to the original length to get the new length. Uh, so hopefully it's fairly obvious that that's three times bigger. So my scale factor for this one is three. Now I'm just gonna have to move the camera up a bit more so that you, I can fit more of the page in. Uh, let's hope. Let's move, there we go, lots of concentrating here. Uh, and lastly, to find the center of enlargement, what you need to do is to join up some matching corners. So I'm gonna join up this corner to this corner. And you, again, you need to be really accurate because any errors just means that your lines don't cross over all in one place. So I'm gonna draw these corners together. Uh, next up, I'm gonna say do this corner to this corner. So take this pair of matching corners. And what you should find is that when you join all the pairs of matching corners, if you do it really accurately, is that all these lines cross over in one place. So all I'm doing at the moment is joining up matching pairs of corners with some lines. And you can see they're all starting to cross here which tells me that that must have been my center of enlargement, so we'll call it A. Okay, so that's my center of enlargement. Now, if you get one that goes the other way up, so a negative scale factor, then remember the shape sort of went upside down. Let's see if I can get all that on the screen for you. Just about to see if I can get an extra inch. Okay, so the shape goes upside down. So this time, this corner would have come from that corner over there. So when I'm looking for my center of enlargement, I need to make sure I'm really careful about which corners go with which. So I need to think about where would it have come from when it flipped over. Okay, so that one would have come from there. And you can see my lines are starting to cross here. So I think that's my center of enlargement. 
Okay, now this obviously is difficult for us to send for you to do at the moment because uh, I, it, you haven't got the access to print everything, um, but that's the principle of what you need to do. Okay, so hopefully you've now had a go at all the things on the sheet and you now also know the theory of how you can find the center enlargement of two shapes that are already drawn.